Good morning, Guardians. Briar Rabbit here. Today, I want to talk a little bit about the difficulty in Destiny 2, specifically in the Warmind DLC. So, with the Warmind DLC, we actually got quite a bit more difficulty uh, in a lot of events, in Escalation Protocol, in the new Raid Lair, in Heroic Strikes. There's there's quite a bit of opportunity to, let's say, get your butt kicked in Destiny 2 right now. And along with that, there's actually some new and very powerful weapons to help you, well, not get your butt kicked or to kick butt yourself. And it's been an interesting time to watch the community react to that. Now, we've seen with the Escalation Protocol that there was a major pushback from the community about the difficulty. They even went so far, a lot of people even went so far as to blame, you know, content creators who went to the Bungie Summit for making something so hard that only streamers or only YouTubers or only people who could get massive groups together could actually complete it. And I'm gonna push back on that idea. This isn't gonna be a popular idea for everybody. I uh, talked a little bit about this in last week's Destiny Community Podcast, and it, it was definitely not a popular idea among everybody, but I think it's for the good of the game and it's for the good of the longevity of activity. So here's what I'm thinking, right? There's a problem, there are several problems with difficulties that are too low. For for one, there's no real incentive to try to get more powerful. So traditionally, when a new DLC has come out, my personal response to the DLC has been grind for as much power as I can get until I do the raid. Do the raid, and then I don't care anymore. I literally, like, I do not even look at power or light level numbers at all anymore. If something comes along that's higher light level, you know, maybe I will infuse it into something that I actually use. Maybe I won't. I really don't care because I've already completed the most difficult content in the game and there's no real incentive for me to continue to grind for power. And the same kind of goes for weapons, right? Is Yeah, I, I'm definitely a destiny collector. Some might even say I'm a hoarder. Uh, I do like to kind of collect all of the weapons and armor in destiny. But the incentive to do that is often lower if there's no real reason to get those weapons. If the weapons are really good in PvP, then I'm definitely going to want them because the difficulty of PvP is always going to be high, right? You're playing other players in their tactics that are always changing. But in PvE, when things start to become rote, once you've completed the raid, which is often the highest level difficulty event in a DLC or a new release for Destiny or Destiny 2 then the PvE challenge really, it's gone after that. So the the grind to go out and get the most powerful weapons and gear, if they don't have a use in PvP, becomes very, very low. And the gameplay itself becomes kind of mindless and kind of boring to me. In PvE, once I've finished a raid, I often kind of just transition over to PvP because once there's no challenge to PvE activities, once you can basically mindlessly run through them, they become, well, boring. They, there's, no, there's no thought process that goes into, you know, loadouts and team composition and, you know, how to most effectively burn this boss down. You know, none of that stuff matters when the stuff is all really easy. Now, with the Warmind DLC, we got a few events that were actually really challenging and have remained really challenging even as we build our power levels. One is the new Raid Lair. Spire of Stars can be very difficult. It does get a lot easier once you hit about 371 power level, uh, but it is a challenging Raid Lair, and it's fun because of that. It keeps you your mind engaged, and you constantly always have to be thinking about what's the step I'm on, what's the next, next step, and how do I achieve the goals that are in front of me? And that's a lot of fun. Escalation Protocol was kind of the same thing. One of the exciting things about Escalation Protocol was they added a new endgame activity. So the reason to get more powerful, to, to collect the most powerful gear in the game and to grind for power level was not just to get to the raid and to beat the raid, but now there was another activity, the Escalation Protocol, that also required you to be very powerful and to be, you know, a high light level. And I liked that. What I didn't like about it was that it seemed to be, it seemed to play best with 
at least six people, right? Unfortunately, you could only bring three people with you or two people with you for a three-man total fire team into patrol to compete in the activity. And that created some issues where you had to mess with matchmaking a little bit. You had to kind of constantly reload into the event to finally load in with somebody that you knew. And then you could build two or three fire teams of up to nine players to then complete the escalation protocol, which was insanely fun. Getting nine guardians running around in the escalation protocol was a ton of fun. Uh, you had to, aside from just getting nine players together, which is great, you also had to talk about team composition, what weapons everybody was using. Are we going to use a lot of Nova bombs here? Where are we going to use our Night Stalkers? Uh, who's going to be doing Melting Point? You know, that kind of stuff was really fun. And as opposed to the biggest fire team we've ever had before, a six-man fire team in a raid, having a nine-man fire team all concentrating on that stuff, it was a ton of, ton of fun. It was chaotic. There were people everywhere, but it was a lot of fun. So the benefits of high difficulty actually are you know, pretty apparent in something like that. Players are incentivized to actually get more powerful, right? Is you you see that there is a challenge in front of you, you want to master that challenge, and one of the best routes to do so are to actually get more powerful, either by grinding for power level or by you know getting better weapons, getting a sleeper simulant, getting a tractor cannon, you know, whatever whatever weapons that you think are going to help you out in this situation, you go out, you try and get them. Great gear actually feels more useful. A great piece of gear in a very easy event, it doesn't actually feel that much powerful because everything's dying to any gun you have. But when the when the enemies you're facing are much more difficult and there's plenty of them, then suddenly the best gear in the game becomes way more useful and way more valuable and way more worth grinding for because you actually need that gear to compete. And that's really fun. I like that about the Warmind DLC. Now, there's also the unique builds and loadouts that become useful and they encourage thought and planning and team coordination that you just don't find. If you load into just a regular old strike playlist that's very easy to compete, you don't worry about what your teammates are using. You just go in there, you use some supers, you shoot some stuff in the head, you have some conversations. You don't really talk about the strike, right? You're just kind of blowing through it as fast as you can. Increased difficulty allows for more wow moments. They ha being able to burn down a you know a massive boss in Escalation Protocol or in the raid really fast because you've got like really great weapons to do so with and you've co coordinated with your fire team not only what weapons everybody's using, what supers everybody's using, but when and where to actually use them. These are things that harder difficulty levels actually promote, right? You don't need to do that in a strike playlist, but you definitely want to be doing it in a raid or in escalation protocol. And that's why I'm really in support of having more difficult challenges. Yeah, sometimes players who are a bit more casual, players who don't have time to put in a, you know, the grind for the best weapons and the best power level, at the beginning of a DLC may have a hard time with some of these challenges. But nerf and escalation protocol before players even hit max light level, I think is a huge mistake. Maybe it's hard for people to get players together, but there are tools out there to help with that. There's LFGs, there's Twitter, you know, there's there's ways to get a hold of people. You know, you can go into a Twitch chat of you know a, a a streamer who's playing Escalation Protocol and asked to join the team. Nine people is a lot of people. People, you know, are looking for other people to run Escalation Protocol with. So nerfing it, I don't know. It just really gimped it. It doesn't feel like a end game level event anymore. It doesn't feel like end game content anymore, which is really too bad because Escalation Protocol is very close to, you know, it's very, it's something that's very special in Destiny Two. It's never really been done before in Destiny 2. It's it's close to a horde mode. It's very fun. And it gave players an opportunity to work as a team in a huge fire team of nine players. And that's 
it's still possible to do that, but it's definitely not necessary anymore. And I think because it's not necessary anymore, you're going to see a lot less of it, which is really too bad. So in the end, what I'm really advocating for is for players to wait a minute before they ask for activities to be nerfed. Before they say these are activities are too hard, why don't we wait a minute until we're max power level or close to it? Why don't we wait a minute until you know we've had a chance to get some of the best weapons in the game? We've had a chance to grind for some of the catalysts to make you know exotic weapons even better than they already were. Why don't we wait a minute before we start nerfing activities that could be really fun end game content and make them just mediocre content. That's gonna do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button if you like the video. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you guys next time.